Hi, I'm Ashley Heideman from GD Advising, and in this session, we're going to talk about a torts multiple choice question together. And I've chosen this question because it's one of the uh, bar examiner's favorite things to test. I've seen this type of question tested in exams from 1990 to exams from 2019. I just see the issue tested over and over again because a lot of people will get it wrong and fall into the examiner's trap. So we'll talk about what that is when, when, once we read this question together. So let's start by just reading the question together. A 16-year-old boy was operating a motorboat. While operating the motorboat, the boy got distracted by text messages from his friend and the boy inadvertently struck a woman sitting in a canoe in his path. The boy did not know the woman was there. The woman suffered serious injuries and sued the boy for battery. Will the woman succeed? Now take a minute and think about the answer to this question, and you can even pick an answer choice if you want, and then unpause the video and we'll regroup and we'll talk about how to approach a question like this. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and you thought about your answer choice. Now let's talk about how to approach this kind of question. And I'm gonna give you a couple hints. The very first tip that I have for you is make sure that you're looking at the tort that's being sued for. In this case, the tort is battery. Okay, so this is an intentional tort. All right, we wanna find, we're in the intentional tort category. We're not in a negligence category. She's saying that the boy intentionally struck her. So that's the first thing that you wanna do is look at what's actually being sued for. The second thing that you wanna do, the second tip I have, is to actually try to think of what the rule is for battery. And do this before you even look at the answer choices. Think of the rule and apply it and see if you can answer the question before you even look at the answer choices. This is how you get into the habit of dissecting these questions and it's help, it will help make you very quick at answering questions. Because once you see these kinds of patterns, you'll recognize them when you see them again and you'll start to get more and more questions correct. So what is the rule for battery? You might have your own rule memorized, that's fine. I'm just gonna tell you the second restatement rule, which is that a battery is an act with intent to cause a harmful or offensive contact or an imminent apprehension of that contact and a harmful or offensive contact directly or indirectly results. So to break that down, there's three things you need for a battery. You need an act, you need intent to cause a harmful or offensive contact. This means that you actually want to cause the contact, okay? Or it's your purpose to cause the contact. If you're just negligent, you know, you're like walking around and you, you accidentally hit somebody, there's no intent because you're not intending to cause the contact. You're just negligent in that case. Battery is an intentional tort. Okay, so we have an act, we have intent to cause a contact. And then the last element is that a harmful or offensive contact directly or indirectly results. So a prime example is if I punch someone in the face, okay? I've acted because I punched him in the face. Um, I intended to cause that contact. I knew what I was doing. And a harmful contact directly resulted from my fist hitting their face, okay? So that's the prime example of a battery. A battery is, falls into the intentional tort category. And this is my third tip for you, by the way. Um, a battery falls into the intentional tort category. And you want to make sure that you keep intentional torts separate from negligence. So negligence means that you don't intend to do something. You're not thinking about doing something. In fact, you're not thinking. You know, you're walking around, you're flailing your arms, and you hit somebody. Um, that would be a negligence case because you're not intending to cause any contact. Versus the intentional torts, you are intending to do something. So things like battery, assault, trespass to chattels, conversion, false imprisonment. Here, you are intending to do something. Uh, you're intending to hit somebody in the face. You're intending to cause an imminent apprehension and assault. You're intending to be on someone else's property in a trespass case. Okay, you actually have that intent versus in a negligence case, you're, you're, it's not that you're thinking, you're not thinking. You don't have any bad intent, uh, but maybe you should be more aware of your surroundings or whatever. So that's the, the third tip is to keep in mind, if somebody is suing for an intentional tort, you need that intent versus if somebody is suing for negligence, you're not looking for intent. That's a huge um, trap that the examiners 
like to trick people with because people will mix them up. So to summarize my three tips, first, think of the rule. Um, at first, pay very close attention to the court, tort that's being sued for. In this case, it's a battery. Second, think of the rule and try to apply it before you even look at the answer choices, if possible. And then third, make sure that you are keeping track of where everything is in your outline. Negligence is its own category and intentional torts is its own category, and they're different. And they all have this key distinction as to mindset. For negligence, the person isn't thinking at all, they're just not acting prudently. For intentional torts, the person does have intent. And if you keep this in mind, you'll get questions like this correct. Okay, we can even answer this question before we look at the answer choices, by the way. Um, if, we, if we look at the facts, it said the woman suffered serious injuries and sued the boy for battery. But look at the couple sentences before that. It said the boy got distracted by text messages from his friend, and the boy inadvertently struck the woman. So he accidentally struck the woman. He was looking at his phone, texting, and he struck the woman. Are you liable for an intentional tort if you did not intend to cause that contact that caused the harm? No, intentional tort requires intent. Here, he would not be liable for an intentional tort, okay, because he didn't have the intent. Um, he wasn't thinking about hurting her. He just wasn't thinking at all. He was texting. He probably should have been thinking. She'd probably win in a negligence case. But here, she did not sue for negligence. She sued for battery. So pay close attention to what she's suing for and then read those facts closely because every fact is in there for a reason. So in this case, will the woman succeed? Let's just answer the question before we even look at it. The answer here is no, the woman won't succeed because the boy didn't have the intent to cause the contact. Um, and answer choice C actually perfectly summarizes that. It says no because the boy did not intend to strike the woman. He lacked the intent. She would probably win, in, or she could win in a negligence case, but not in a battery case. Let's look at the other answer choices just to make sure they're incorrect. Sometimes you'll go back through while you're confirming that the other answer choices are incorrect and you'll actually find that one of them is right. So it happens occasionally. But it'll make you more confident in your answers if you're able to go through and say why the other answer choices are incorrect. So A says yes if the trier effect finds that a boy of his age, intelligence, and experience would have been able to avoid the collision. Why is this one incorrect? This is incorrect for two reasons, actually. First, this applies a negligence standard. This is negligency language, okay? Age, intelligence, and experience. Uh, they're using the standard of care that would apply to a child. Here, the woman is not suing for negligence, she's suing for battery. The second reason this is wrong is because even if you got confused and you thought it was a negligence case, the child standard wouldn't apply here. Because while it is a child, it's a 16-year-old boy, the child was engaged in adult activity. He was operating a motorboat. So even though he is a child, the reasonably prudent person standard would apply in this case, not uh, the subjective standard that applies to children. So A is wrong for two reasons. And A is one that most people pick, honestly. B says yes, because the boy intended to drive the boat which caused her harm. Think about this logically. If you are liable for all actions that you intend to do, you'd be liable for everything. And everything would be an intentional tort. I could be putting my hair up in a ponytail and hitting someone by accident, and that would all of a sudden be a battery. When, in which case, we know it's not a battery. That could be a negligence case if I wasn't aware of my surroundings or something, and I should have been, but it would not be a battery case. C says no because the boy did not intend to strike the woman. That one's correct, as we said. Let's just make sure. Let's look at D. D says no because the boy did not make direct physical contact with the woman. This messes with people because people will say, yeah, that's true. He actually didn't hit the woman. It was his motorboat uh, that struck the canoe in his path, which caused her harm. You know, it wasn't like where I punch someone in the face and my fist makes contact with her face. But remember, a battery is an act with intent to cause a harmful or offensive contact or imminent apprehension thereof, and a harmful or offensive contact directly or indirectly results. It doesn't have to be flesh meeting flesh, okay? Um, because otherwise, if I punched you in the face, it would be a battery, but if I threw my phone at you, it wouldn't be a battery. That doesn't make any sense. They're both batteries. 
Okay, so you don't have to physically touch the other person for it to be a battery. An object can do it for you. It's just that intent that needs to be there. So if he had intended to drive his motorboat into that canoe and she was hurt, that would be a battery. As, and it doesn't matter that he didn't physically ever touch her. Uh, a case that, that might help you remember this is the Garrett v. Daly case. This is a famous case that uh, you read in law school where the boy, uh, a boy like moves a chair right before a woman's about to sit down and she hits the floor. Because he intended for that contact to happen, he's going to be liable for battery, even though he never touched, in fact, it was the opposite. He never touched her, nothing, nothing touched her if, if uh, you know, he moved the chair, so she just sat on the floor. But the contact was her hitting the floor, okay? He acted, he moved the chair, he had intent to cause that contact, he knew what he was doing, and then the contact resulted, okay? Because she hit the floor and then she broke her tailbone or whatever. So keep that in mind with battery questions. So hopefully those tips help you pay close attention to what the tort is that the person's suing for, try to state the rule before answering the question, and then keep in mind the different sections of your outline because intentional torts have different requirements than negligence. All right, hopefully this helps. Thanks so much.